Okay, let's get in positions, everyone. Camera one into a fast second period. Camera one, track left. Open up. Watch your focus, Kids are on the air. Kids wanna know. Kids wanna know. Kids wanna know. Hi, I'm Chris Eddy, and this is Kids Wanna Know. Today, we're at the California State Fair in Sacramento, a place not only to have fun on carnival rides and eat really fattening food. This year, you're going to learn things about science and space. On exhibit at the fair, they have things from the U.S. Space Camp. Instead of talking about it, let's take a look at it. Five, four, three, two, one. Solid rocket ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia on a voyage to the future. Before you can do this, you have to do this, and this, and this. And one way to do all this is at the U.S. Space Camp. In one way, we kind of try to make dreams come true. Uh, just about everybody, whether they're admitted or not, just wonder what it's like to be an astronaut. And we can give them, you know, we can't put them in space and give them the next closest experience of what it's like to be an astronaut. And our main goal is to try and use that excitement of the space exploration and what it's like to be in space to promote math and science in schools. You learn about space and astronauts, not through books, but by actually doing what they do, starting with food. During the Apollo missions, they ate food from a tube like toothpaste, and it tasted terrible. But over the years, it's apparently gotten much better. Now in the space program, uh, they actually eat pretty, really nice food. I mean, shrimp cocktail, filet mignon. <laughs> we, 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 now we know where our money's going to NASA. Yeah. Filet mignon and shrimp cocktail. Yeah. With all these dried out foods, you'd think the astronauts would lose weight. And, and that's, that's a big misconception. Everyone says, you know, these guys come back and eating this stuff, you know, you drop all this weight. But when you're in microgravity and, and weightlessness, you're not using your muscles. I mean, as we're standing here now, you know, there is tension built up in our muscle. We're keeping our muscle tone. When the astronauts go up, they're floating. You know, they're in, they're in just microgravity. So there, there's no tension on their muscles. And they have to exercise three to four hours a day just to keep up a regular schedule so when they come back down, they won't be totally devastated. In fact, it's normal for astronauts to put on five or six pounds. But I found out the real reason. And as I can see, they, they have the always nutritious brownie in here also. Have the nutritious brownie, you know, for, the, for those little snacks they have there. But even more important was their space suits. The old Apollo suits provided oxygen, water, and communication. They were much more advanced than the old Russian suits, except for one little thing, going to the bathroom. They had to use a UCD, or a urine collection device, it was basically some underwear with special pockets and tubes to catch the, well, you know. But don't worry, you don't have to wear these at Space Camp. This is actually a Space Camp EVA suit. Uh, this is what we use uh, when our kids go through the different simulated shuttle missions. They'll go out and they'll repair satellites or build space structures or whatever. Of course, they got to have a suit on, otherwise they'll die in space. Now, underneath the space suit, they have what's called a liquid cooling garment. And it's basically, in layman's terms, long underwear with water tubes running all through it. And on the front, right here, there'd be a control panel, and they control the heat or the coolness of the water so the astronauts can stay comfortable inside the suit. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. These video machines are all around to help you learn more about the history of the space program. And some are like video games. This one lets you build a rocket and launch it. They have models of famous vehicles in space history, including the Hubble telescope. Its purpose is to go into space so we can see what's out in deep space. Maybe one day it'll find other life, like a planet of Barney's. Sorry about that. In 1969, we did a land on the moon. That was in the Apollo program. We had the Apollo capsule on my left. And but this is actually what landed on the moon. The capsule didn't land on the moon. It orbited with the command module uh, around the moon while the ac two astronauts went down the surface. And how, how they went down the surface was with the LEM. They would be in the top part, and they would descend onto the moon's surface. When they landed, this made it land very soft. And when they left the moon's surface, the top part projects up, you have the bottom part stay. So we actually have six of these, six of the bottom part actually still on the moon. And will we go back someday? There are probably more uh, rover type uh, unmanned missions where they would send rovers up to explore and uh, map the surface, but we, there's really not a whole lot we can do with the moon that, that they're thinking of. They, they're looking long term toward Mars. Mars Space Station, then Mars, those are really the two main goals that uh, the space program seems to be aiming towards. This is called a manned maneuvering unit. 
What it was used for is to go out into space away from the shuttle so you weren't even attached. And it is possible that you could have even flown away. And you'll fly away if you don't hang on tight on these machines. They help you to feel what it's like when working in space. The multi-axis trainer gives you that feeling of weightlessness while spinning around. I was surprised to hear that most people don't get sick from this. And I'm getting sick just watching. And talk about running in circles. This machine gives you a feeling of trying to walk while weightless. The 5 Degrees of Freedom machine gives an example of maneuvering in space. And if Rob and Brad need any extra lunch money... <laughs> and for those of you who want to be jet fighter pilots... Yeah, this is an F-4 Phantom II uh, jet cockpit simulator. Um, we we'll use it for an aviation challenge, which is kind of our camp about military aviation. It's to show our trainees what it's like, what they actually have to go through before they can become a jet pilot. Now, these things are big bucks, multi-million dollar. Uh, they have to go through, before the pilots are actually allowed to fly the planes, they have to go through with the different jet pilot simulators, then go through all the procedures, learn them until uh, it's just second-hand nature, uh, so they know exactly what they're going to have to do in any kind of situation. Riding machines may be a lot of fun, but remember what's most important about Space Camp. No matter what you want to be, whether it's an astronaut, teacher, doctor, pilot, whatever, we try and push education as much as we can. Just, you know, trying to let the kids that come through know that no matter what they want to do, to make their dream come true, they're going to have to stay in school and get an education. And one day, people of Earth could be watching their TV and hear you say, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. <laughs>